BTC has just gone sub 60k and uh, yeah I mean I think that if, if there was ever squeaky bum time it was right now while we were watching it dip down so we we're looking at this 58 as a potential area where we're going to get a bounce so we're going to see was that the bottom there uh, for BTC is there more to come then I'm looking at a couple of major indicators here that could tell us there's a bit more downside uh, on some of these alts that uh, could be a little bit of concern for us so I've prepped some charts for you guys I've got some big levels for you we're talking some layer ones I've got I've got RWAs, I've got AI, I've got gaming, I've got a whole mix for you guys, I've got you covered. Let's get into this. So Banta Bubbles giving us a little bit of a mixed bag here in Dubai. And I've got to tell you guys, I had quite an experience in the last uh, 24 hours here in Dubai that I'm going to talk to you guys about now. Uh, you can see I'm in my hotel. There's a curtain behind me. It's not as exciting at night. Uh, you don't get much of a view behind me. So I thought I'd better just give you the curtain. Um, okay, what are we looking at here? I see there's some uh, news on Sui. So Sui is up 12% based on a new situation. Uh, Injective doing well. We've got Injective 3.0 coming. So there's exciting stuff happening there. And uh, you know just a general mix here so it hasn't been very exciting but we have noticed a big bleed out now on btc and we've seen these altcoins they held okay uh, relative to btc but now we had a dominant situation and dominance moving down uh, onto some support so we're going to take a closer look here and uh, but let's first just break down this uh, this btc situation so this is how i've been watching it now this afternoon and uh, when i saw this candle coming down i started prepping uh, for a long a little bit lower i was looking uh, for a long on btc in this 58k region and you could see why i thought we were going to get a, a potential wick uh, into that area that was going to signal the bottom of this potential move but they seem to have wicked us up uh, a little bit earlier so what am i watching right now i'm going to be watching the lows of this current wick yes uh, 59 680 i'm watching this very closely and then my next big one is going to be anything from say 58 uh, call it 58 500 up to about 59k uh, is another area of interest for me i just want to see what happens uh, if we come and play uh, in this little area so i am currently long btc i took a i took a long now on that little dip and, uh, you know, we were waiting for a little bit lower, but it started reversing. So I thought, let me just jump in quickly uh, and see what happens. So this is my current situation uh, on Prime XBT. If you want to trade this with me uh, on Prime XBT, there is a link in the description below. They are offering you a 7% uh, sign-up bonus if you join uh, Prime XBT. And remember, we might be trading gold and oil and the S&P again because that uh, is falling over. And uh, there could be some longs building. Uh, in the near future so get your prime xbt accounts ready because we can trade that stuff uh, as well so jump in there this is my current situation uh, i'm going to monitor this trade as we go along uh, potentially cut here if we lose these lows but alternatively you know uh, that area now that i'm watching that 58 uh, a little bit lower so we're going to keep our eyes on that and uh, how am i playing this current move now if btc pushes up i'm going to start exercising caution i'm going to be looking to take something off the table here uh, anything around the 61 600 region that's where i'm going to be trimming things a little bit i would say then if we do start breaking horizontals and trends we're going to deal with that that's a uh, different issue but right now bigger picture macro stuff looks like things are heading down things are looking a little bit sad here so we're currently in these conditions where we want to be taking profits uh, on any decent moves that we're getting uh, out of these tokens you can see if you just look at this current btc chart we've been in a massive downtrend here and uh, you know we can't say when this little downtrend is going to end but what we do know is when we get little moves we can take little sculpts we can take profit uh, along the way so that is my current game plan today uh, with these uh, with these current trades that uh, that I've got going on. Oh, I've also got an AVAX short and a Phantom uh, long on that uh, on that little move. But I'm going to talk to you guys uh, about that one shortly. Okay, now most importantly, I want to show you guys. <laughs> I want to show you guys what happened to me last night. We came to Dubai. We came to the desert. Okay, and uh, you know, you come to the desert, you don't expect much to happen here with regards to rainfall uh, and all these things. And uh, I actually got caught in a bit of a in a bit of a situation. Uh, yesterday so i want to just show you guys uh, i want to show you guys what happened to me here you can follow me on twitter uh, that is also there at the lord of entry you can follow me there i'm just grabbing my screen here again i just want to make sure you get the sound uh, with this one as well um here we go okay so share sound here we go uh, so tell me if you guys uh, can hear this uh, this uh, current situation but this was me last guys, night guys i just wanted to update you on my current situation 
there's a Rolls. There's a Rolls Royce there. Yeah, these, I'm literally knee deep in water, yeah? I'm trying to get back. <laughs> it's quite fun. It's a good evening. Good evening. <laughs> so. So that was a bit of a wild night for me. I decided at one o'clock in the afternoon to pop out with Sheldon. We were going to go to a mall. By the time we left the hotel, I thought, geez, this is a bad idea. We were sitting in a little bit of water and I thought, geez, I'm going to stay in this taxi and just let him take me home. By the time we got to the one mall, the taxi driver told me to get up. He said, he's not driving back. And he said, no, I must take the train. So I went to the train station and the train station was shut down. So I basically took about eight or nine hours to get back home uh, to my hotel. The place was absolutely shut down. Uh, it was an absolute nightmare. And I actually only went to bed at three o'clock. I was wading through knee deep uh, and waist deep water so uh, quite an uh, quite an opening uh, quite a nice opening experience here uh, in dubai for me and uh, i think it can only get better from here i, I, don't, I don't think things can get uh, uh, any worse uh, let's see who is in the chat here what are you guys up to i see luba uh, is in the chat here as well and i know she's just arrived uh, in dubai as well so uh, we're going to definitely meet up and uh, guys if you are in the area obviously dm me on twitter tell me what's happening in dubai uh, let's see if i'm going to see you guys at the conference uh, coming up there's a lot of side events as well uh, that I'm going to be hanging around in. So uh, looking forward to meeting some of you guys. If you are around, me and Sheldon are obviously uh, cruising the streets and uh, you know we'll we'll be seeing you guys okay let's get uh, let's get out uh, some of the news situation here so yesterday uh, we saw joe powell a little bit hawkish uh, on uh, the current inflation situation the market didn't like that and uh, there, there is a fear and greed index floating around for the s p 500 believe it or not and uh, currently it's at 36 which basically means they're shitting themselves, okay? So 36, the S&P hasn't seen pain like this in a very, very long time. I want you guys to have a look at this S&P chart. When last did we see a bleed out in the S&P like this? This was October 23, the last time we saw candles like this. So there is pressure uh, on the US market and we can see it's moving into the crypto markets. The alts were first, the alts were getting absolutely hammered. Now they're laying into Bitcoin. Uh, is 58, 59 gonna be the bottom of a BTC? Well, we're gonna have to see. And uh, I think we, we've seen a correlation now with the S&P and BTC lately, and uh, they seem to be playing the game together now. So uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily easy enough to read the situation, but it is nice that we've got some correlation. So a little bit of weakness on the S&P and uh, where's the lovely zone where's a guaranteed bounce zone for me well the guaranteed bounce zone for me on the s p is deep uh we're looking at uh, 4800 so this fear and greed thing uh, could go to extreme fear uh, in the next couple of days if we start going sub five uh, on the s p but if you look at this uh, on the weekly chart you know just to get a perspective going here as to what is actually happening there's nothing wrong with a little bit of a retracement here after all these weeks of up i mean this is from october 2023 they've been non-stop uh, it's traveling up and uh, you guys will remember I tried to short the S&P uh, a couple of times and then I just said no fuck this. I'm stepping out of the way of these guys they're absolute animals they were just buying everything uh, even when it didn't make sense so uh, now it's finally getting its little healthy retrace and we're going to see uh, how we're going to play this but I think uh, the S&P you can trade that with me on Prime XPT and uh, I'm looking for something in this area I think by the time we get uh, to this 4.8 level uh, we're going to have a couple of indicators telling us that we might get some kind of bounce might get some kind of reversal there so that is what i'm watching now on the s p but for me as long as there's weakness on the s p we most probably uh, going to see some weakness uh, in the crypto markets too uh, and uh, obviously btc that's going to be uh, a little bit of pain there so uh, i enjoyed this tweet here he said this weekend this is uh, vettel lunda he says this weekend was a proper deleveraging okay notional open interest on btc perps has declined by 11 percent to yearly lows Okay, the shakeout in altcoins was even wilder by using TradingView's total two as a notional proxy relative altcoin OI has plunged to lows not seen since February 23. Okay, so basically these alts are getting smashed. And uh, I mean, we've been watching these alts bleed out, bleed out, bleed out. And uh, in the context of a bull market the whole time, but uh, now we are back to these bear market levels uh, on some of these altcoins. It's quite fascinating. And uh, then our funding rate heat map, I mean, this has been completely wiped out. This is a full uh, reset here with what's going on. And uh, we just need interest to start coming back uh, into these altcoins and I'm going to show you uh, a couple of indicators now if you guys stick around I'm going to show you you know a few reasons why I think we could see a little bit deeper here uh, on some of these altcoins so we're going to talk about them uh, at the moment and uh, and just try and understand these levels and where we are sitting okay I see BTC is now yeah it's turning down okay so just a reminder 
I'm looking at this level a little bit lower down here for BTC. I think this is going to be a banger, uh, this 58-ish reason, 58, 500, uh, anywhere in this area. So keep your eyes on that uh, for BTC uh, during, the next, uh, during the next couple of hours. Okay. BTC traders, bigger picture, uh, again, looking like the S&P now. Look at this chart. It looks exactly like the S&P. We've toppled over. They're trading together and uh, nothing wrong with a little bit of a retracement, nothing wrong with a bit of a pullback. And I would suspect now that when the S&P eventually bounces, we're going to see BTC bounce uh, at a similar time and uh, they should start moving together. So if you look at the context of this chart, again, I've shown you guys this one uh, a few times now. This is just a bullish uh, situation here. This is a nice little bull flag here on the weekly. And uh, we could see a few months, uh, well, a couple of weeks uh, maybe up to a month or two of sideways now during the summer holidays uh, in the US. Now, remember, they say go away in May or, or what do they say? They say stay away in May and uh, whatever the story is, let's see if it's going to play out again uh, or is this time different. We know that that uh, saying often does uh, play out and we might just get a little bit of sideways and chop and uh, just start frustrating people, uh, you know, in the alt market and uh, on BTC. So right now, we can't really complain as bulls for Bitcoin. Uh, you can see some kind of bull flag here on the weekly. So nothing too depressing, uh, you know, nothing uh, out of the ordinary yet uh, with regards to just trade and and, uh, and price action. Okay, there's a couple of things now that are very interesting uh, to me that I wanted to discuss uh, with you. Number one, okay, this is BTC dominance on the weekly. Okay, what does this tell me? This gives me a guide as to how these altcoins are going to be trading. Obviously, it tells us as well uh, what BTC is doing. But uh, for me, as an altcoin trader, I like to use dominance as a guide. It tells me when I'm going to get reactions. It tells me when I'm going to get potential rejections or bounces uh, in the altcoin market and these things. So uh, we have seen an interesting development here. So we have broken through a major, major weekly resistance level on dominance. So why was this? Uh, why is this important to me? Well, number one, this is a weekly resistance zone. So this was telling me every time we pushed up to this region in dominance, we had relief on the altcoins. We got an altcoin bounce. We got some kind of altcoin rally uh, whenever we pushed into the zone. And then we would reject in that area and these alts would start pushing higher. And uh, that was always a nice little marker for us, uh, for these altcoins to tell us when we were going to get some action. Now, uh, the tricky situation is we've blown through this major weekly support and we got our first rejection on that big dump uh, that we had the other day. So, so what is happening now? Well, we can see dominance rejected and uh, it's pushing lower. So that is why these altcoins are seem to be holding uh, their levels at the moment. They seem to be holding the lows uh, that we saw uh, we saw last weekend at the moment. But what am I looking at here? I'm looking at dominance now pushing down into a major weekly support region. What does that tell me? That tells me that balance of probabilities, if you get a break of a big horizontal like this on a weekly, what tends to happen after the break is you get the retest, but then you get quite a nice strong bounce uh, out of these regions. And if we're going to get a bounce there, that's going to tell me uh, that some of these altcoins are going to struggle a little bit, uh, especially if BTC is flat uh, or if BTC is turning down uh, and we get a dominance bounce, these alts are going to feel proper pressure. So we just need to be very well aware uh, as to what is now happening uh, with dominance. Because if we look at a regular chart, there's nothing uh, wrong with saying that we're going to get some kind of bullish bounce here. So look out for something along these lines now. And uh, that's potentially going to put uh, these altcoins under pressure. So this is signal number one, why I think we might uh, be feeling a little bit of pressure on these altcoins. And uh, then I've got something else very interesting for you. And I know there's mixed views uh, on uh, on Benjamin Cowan, but you can't you can't deny this man. He's a very smart guy. Obviously, he's a perma bear, but uh, some of his arguments are, you know, they're really great. They're very analytical. And uh, he, hit, he really hits the nail on the head uh, pretty often. I'm not going to bore you by reading you this whole tweet but follow ben cowan here take a look at what he's saying here about eth versus btc okay he's talking about lower and more downside on eth btc and he's got a nice little chart here where he refers to this uh, time in the cycle last time okay so 2019 and uh, if you look at his arrows here on the left he's saying eth versus btc was printing uh, lower highs uh, during this stage of the last cycle and uh, here we are sitting at the moment now we've printed two uh two well one lower high now uh for eth and we're at the same stage of this current cycle and he's saying he's looking for another rejection in this area and he's looking for potentially lower uh on eth btc now remember eth btc has always been a nice indicator for us 
on altcoins. It's always been a nice guide for us to tell us when we could get some kind of altcoin bounce uh, in these types of areas. So we use that. We still use that, uh, you know, as a guide for us. So uh, what am I looking now on ETH BTC? What am I looking at uh, for on ETH BTC? Well, this is the weekly. So we are still in an area where we could expect uh, some kind of reaction and some kind of bounce. You can see they just hanging on to this region. I mean, uh, uh, this is a bit of a gray area right now. Uh, the fact that it's really hanging on by its last thread yet, uh, ETH BTC. But if what Ben Cowan is coming, uh, is saying is correct, we're going to get some kind of push here potentially on ETH, but then he's expecting a major rejection here and then a move much lower down. And I think that is the one that's going to start hurting uh, some of these altcoins. So uh, he's looking for something along these lines based on his chart. He's saying, you know, some kind of lower high. So let's assume uh, even if it's up here, at the 0 0.056 region, uh, that could be a, uh, an area of interest there for the rejection. So what I want to say here is, okay, if we get a bounce, in this region we need to pay attention to number one dominance what is dominance doing and number two we've got to keep one eye on this ETH btc chart we've got to look out uh, for these rejections because the next rejection if it's got anything to do uh, with what happened in the last cycle and uh, what ben is saying we could be looking at a bigger move down now he's calling much deeper uh, than the 618 so for me uh you know i i like to target the 618 on these altcoins i like to target the 618 anywhere uh in crypto on any token uh in crypto and uh you know for me i know we're going to get a strong reaction here at this region is that going to be the bottom of ETH btc well i can't say that for sure all i can tell you is uh by the time we do hit this trend and 618 we are going to get a reaction. So that's going to be our next bounce area uh, for these altcoins. That's going to be our next big one. So what what can, what can scenarios can we look at now? Well, number one, we could get this little move up right now. So that could give the alt something uh, to work with here at the moment. That could give the alt some kind of energy. If we do reject, where's my next big play? Where's my next big bounce zone? That is going to be lower down. This is trend and 618 for me on the weekly. This is a major area for us that we need to pay attention to. So get this chart up. Mark this chart on your uh, on your side. This could take weeks to play out. This could take months uh, to play out. But it's something we need to we need to take note of, and uh, we need to understand these areas. And if we start playing these zones together, uh, ETH BTC dominance and these type of things, then we can start really trying to uh, you know calculate the market and try and figure out where uh, our next move is coming from. Okay. Now, total two, this is another interesting one for us. So total two has been under massive pressure. Now, total two, uh, if you're asking, it's the market cap of the entire crypto market, excluding Bitcoin. Okay, so it's looking at ETH and all these other uh, altcoins. And uh, right, right now, total two has had a full on rejection of a major weekly level. And uh, it's looking uh, it's looking a little bit sad, but it's moving into uh, a, an area of interest for us, a horizontal zone where we could get some kind of short term bounce here. We could get some kind of reaction uh, in this area. So I'm looking at the zone as a sports zone, as a bounce zone, uh, that type of thing. I'm looking for a move higher potentially in this region. So let's look out for something like that. But as you can see, we are in now in a potential downtrend and we could be looking uh, at a situation like this over the next couple of months, especially if everyone decides to stay away. Uh, in May. So uh, let's pay attention to these levels. These are big levels uh, that I'd like you guys to mark on your charts and just take note of here. So uh, the lowest one is 850 billion uh, market cap on uh, total two. And the one we're sitting at right now is uh, 940 billion. So mark those two levels. We're looking for reactions uh, in those zones. And remember, uh, just because things are looking a little bit sad and things are moving down, it doesn't mean we can't have fun. It doesn't mean there's not going to be nice bounces and nice moves. It doesn't mean we're not going to have periods of two or three days where we can be long and strong. Then we can look for TPs. Then we can look for shorts. Remember, the, the, the scenario is just changing uh, a little bit and we just need to adapt to the current situation. So it doesn't mean it's over if the alts are going lower. Uh, there's still going to be action up. There's going to be action down. Uh, it's just going to look a little bit different and we're going to have to start batting. Uh, not, I wouldn't say a little bit smarter, but we have to start batting like we were batting uh, during the bear market when we were trading with this legend. For those of you that were watching us in uh, September, October, Bruce, when was it? We were grinding it out. Oh, in for a year and a half, we were grinding. We were grinding it out in the bear market. So, you know, we had the plans, we had the strategies and uh, nothing really changes. It's just the plan. The game plan changes. And, 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 your ad and the attitude. The people the attitude. that stay calm, cool, collected will be the winners. People that freak out will, well, freak out. Talk to me about this hat. What's going on here? Oh, uh, well, 
you you know me. I'm I'm a uh, I'm a I'm a Solana fan. I I got I got my bag of Solana at eleven and twelve bucks. Um, down a little bit right now, but you know I'm I'm just a real fan of the of the uh, uh, of the token of the blockchain speed price etc. Um, so I decided to get a, a hat. I cut and got He's a maxi. He's a maxi. And uh, here's the, don't forget the Lux bouncer is here. So there's the Lux bouncer. Head office, head office there in the back. Um, Ray, long, short. What what's going on here? What are you doing? Um, I just quick. I took a quick long at uh, the bottom of, of the demand zone. Let's see how it works out. So far, so good. We're up twenty percent. Sure. We'll keep uh, we'll, we'll keep monitoring, guys. Remember, so there's a potential level lower down for BTC that's of interest to us. And uh, you know, I was chatting to some of the guys in Sniper Club as well just before we went live. Uh, I was in the chats there, and some of the guys were also uh, watching this 58k region. So uh, it is notable. It is on the table. I know Uncle Run was also loving this uh, 58k region. So keep that one uh, keep that one on your charts. We could get uh, some kind of bounce there. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to bang through some of the altcoins. I want to just give you a picture uh, as to what is happening at the moment and uh, trading conditions have been slightly uh, slightly trickier over the last couple of weeks we've had everybody saying you know, they're so confused nobody knows what's going on and uh, you know when the market's difficult to read like this sometimes we just need to take a step back sometimes we need to start looking uh, you know at trades in both directions we spent a lot of time during that bear market looking for shorts looking for longs playing the whole sort of uh, complete game but uh, we've been in a bull market now for you know the last couple of months and we've been looking for longs of nice reaction zones and uh, you know the, the guys are confused and what i'm seeing here is we're looking for moves we're looking for shorter moves. We're going to make sure we're taking profits, whether we long, whether we short, and we're just going to play it level by level. Uh, and uh, you know, go, go. We're going to go old school uh, on this stuff again. Okay, um, right. Let's move on to something of interest for you. This is Luke Martin. I mean, I enjoyed this guy. I, I enjoyed his comment. Uh, he was saying, usually when price dips during a bull market, zooming out can make you feel better and keep things in perspective. He says, I'm not sure zooming out helps. <laughs> zooming out helps much right now. Many else have nearly erased six months of gains in one to two weeks. Um, now we saw this. I, I addressed this earlier this week and a little bit, uh, you know, we, we touched on it. We, we're seeing October 2023 levels. We're seeing bear market uh, levels here uh, on some of these altcoins. And, uh, you know, we just got to understand the perspective here that they've come down and they've totally smashed us. So uh, at some point we do get this nice bounce and then we're going to TP, we're going to take our profits and uh, we're going to track this downtrend and we're going to play it accordingly. And uh, another one, nice one to follow here is Wrecked Capital. Okay, so he actually called the last hype cycle if you follow this chart uh, it's very interesting and uh, if we if we look at this chart now he's basically saying the altcoin bottoming when does the excitement come back into altcoins when do people start getting hungry for them again and he's saying realistically end of may early june did someone say sell and stay away in may what what were they saying and uh, you know this could play uh, into his hands here perfectly uh, if you look at his chart so you want to be longing altcoins based on this chart when this uh, when this guy uh, this uh, oscillator dips into the absolute low so keep an eye on this one too uh, interesting uh, interesting theory uh, that he's got going on there okay let's bang through some of these uh, some of these trades let me also show you uh, this is my current situation on weeks Okay, so there's a little bit going on here, and uh, you can see I've been scalping a little bit uh, during the course of the day. I'm, I'm short AVAX at the moment, and uh, I'm long FTM on that uh, BTC bounce. Was I a little bit premature? Well, potentially, uh, we're going to have to wait and see uh, how this is going to play out. You can see my lows here uh, on the week's chart. It's very clear for me. Uh, if we start losing these levels, we can start trimming uh, this phantom position, and we're going to just let this AVAX short just trickle lower and uh, this is a head short for me so if the market does pump for me uh, i have no intention of closing this avax short this is an emergency short uh, if they're going to flush us out or they're going to try and take things lower so i'm just leaving it there uh, just to sort of balance the account out a little bit uh, and see how we go so this is weeks if you guys are interested in trading uh, on weeks with me and uh, also kyc friendly exchange they're offering major sign up bonuses uh, some of the tiers are up to 20 percent uh, that they're offering you guys to sign up there uh, on week so take a look uh, at the exchange if you're looking for a new exchange to trade and uh, they have a nice selection uh, of altcoins and they're one of the faster growing uh, exchanges out there and uh, then don't forget underneath the show description now i don't have it open for you because i've got another video uh, in youtube that i was going to show you guys but uh, under the show description for those of you that want some of the gummy action now remember 
The gummy is this uh, airdrop that is coming. It's a meme token that is coming to you for free. All you need to be doing uh, is to be using one of the exchanges uh, in the sh in the link in the description below. So take a look at Blowfin uh, over there if you want a free gummy airdrop. It's coming to you for free. You just need to be trading uh, on Blowfin. And uh, there's some speculation out there. If you look at Run's tweets, uh, they, they're trying to guess where they think Gummy is going to be trading in the next couple of weeks when it launches. And uh, there's some big market caps uh, floating around there. There's some big estimates. So uh, you don't want to miss out on farming uh, the Gummy token. So get get that blowfin in there and uh, get cracking on it. Okay, uh, here is ETH on the weekly. Now, this has been one of the biggest letdowns uh, in history. And uh, it's looking like that total two market cap chart that I showed you. It's looking like the S&P. It's looking like Bitcoin. These charts are starting to all look the same. We can see there's weakness in the air. And uh, ETH is now drifting lower into uh, another major support area. And it's trying to close out the wick from that dump that we had the other day. Now, remember, when we get a massive dump like that, and uh, we, we've seen this on lower time frames as well, uh, two-hour charts, four-hour charts, we see this. After a massive dump, we often get a revisit uh, of those wick lows there's nothing wrong uh, with a little visit to that area again just to just to confirm and uh, just make sure that you feel the maximum amount of pain uh, when they come and uh, when they come and flush you out so a typical situation we look for on a flush out is the dump into that region then we get the pump up where everyone thinks it's over then they come back down and they give us that little double bottom so this is a scenario that plays out a lot uh, in crypto at the moment. And we're seeing this on some of these altcoins. And uh, we could see this scenario start playing out for us. Again, doesn't mean we're guaranteeing that there's going to be a double bottom. But when you get a dump like that, you got to plan for an event like that. you got to assume that they could easily come uh, and send things back uh, to these areas. So where am I looking to add to my ETH position again? Well, the exact same story. Once we hit these lows uh, of that bounce, the bounce was 2,800. When we get to the 2,800 level, that is where I'm adding to my ETH position again. That for me is going to be a double bottom play then on the daily. And I'm looking for a reaction there. Now, again, does that mean that's the end and uh, the bear market is now over? No, not necessarily. What that means for me is we could get a dip into this region and then we could get a nice little push up there with ETH BTC showing a little bit of strength, a little bounce uh, into that area. And then we're going to look and reassess when we bang into about 3,100, and then we're gonna make a decision how we're gonna play uh, ETH uh, once we get to that region. So remember, we are in a downtrend, and now it's been heavily, uh, heavily sold for two weeks, but easy. Uh, we can get a little bounce here before we start the next leg down, if they're gonna send us lower down. And uh, we can just track that trend all the way. So remember, if you're scalping now, you're grabbing bounces, you're looking to TP uh, and do these types of things along the way. And I'm gonna show you a plan on Injective that you can apply to a lot of your tokens. Uh, in uh, actually, in fact, this is my next chart. I'm going to show you where you can look for shorts and longs and have an actual plan in play uh, before these things uh, before these things start happening. Okay, so here is Injective bullish news on Injective. What is this telling us? Injective three is coming to town. Okay, and uh, it's a massive upgrade for these guys. And the new proposal would directly reduce the supply of Injective at a rapid rate. Okay, burning tokens is bullish okay you're getting rid of supply what does that mean more demand that type of thing and uh, generally the price would go up now if obviously if we're sweating at the moment we might have to wait for the benefits of uh, this uh, this burn but remember injective is a big banger and uh, it's been on my hit list uh, for many many months and uh, you know if you're getting injective at nice juicy levels I would suggest accumulate this injective wherever you can especially uh, on big levels because there's going to be big things in store uh, for injective okay so here is injective on the day and uh, this is uh, this is my current trading plan uh, on injective this is how i'm playing the current situation so as you can see what's happened here uh, we are in a clear downtrend and now you can apply this principle to uh, to your charts as well to any of the tokens that you're playing with uh, you can see we are in a downtrend now currently how do you play this downtrend how do you play the bounces well it's quite simple you look for your solid areas for your bounce and uh, this was one of the zones that we put in sniper club uh, earlier uh, well yesterday afternoon so there was a, a scalp long potentially brewing in this zone yesterday uh, on any pullbacks into uh, this uh, 23 22 to 23 region and uh, you're looking for a tiny little move you're looking for well on this chart it's not exactly tiny it's still about 20 odd percent but uh, you're looking for a move just to your next level just to your next resistance area and 
user, that then becomes your TP zone. That then becomes your area where you're taking profits, you're raising stops, you're doing these types of things. And then the bears are going to come and uh, they're going to say, well, you know, the S&P is bleeding. They're hawkish at the moment. And uh, macro situation tells us lower. And uh, what happens in these situations? We get bounces, but we net down. We're in a downtrend. And uh, what you can start looking for is uh, short opportunities as well. So after the bounces, you can start looking for opportunities to start shorting tokens. And how would I do it on Injective? Well, the game plan is pretty simple at the moment. You can see what's going on here. This light blue line is the 200-day moving average. Okay, and we know history tells us that these altcoins love reacting on the 200-day moving average. And we have now lost it. Okay, we've lost the support. The 200-day MA has been support for us for injective or on injective uh, since October 23. Okay, now we finally lost it. What does that tell me? That tells me our next visit to the 200-day MA could be a bearish retest. It could be a bearish visit. We could start pushing up there and uh, then we could look for the rejection. So my game plan here for injective at the moment is uh, to look for shorts in this region. So if we push up to 28, uh, to 28 to 29 anywhere in this area you can see i've got the 200 day ma for me i've got horizontals in play and uh, that is not telling me we could potentially short this downtrend lower down as well so if we get the pump we're looking for entries here for shorts and then we're potentially looking to ride this one lower and then where's our next long going to be our next long going to be is going to be at the bottom of that wick so if we come and close out that wick that's going to be our next area where we should get some kind of juicy bounce and you can see here uh it's a, it looks like a tiny move on this chart but it's about 25 percent uh that you can take uh on injective on your next area so there's three potential trades uh in play here on injective at the moment so it's a pullback to this 22 to 23 region for the bounce then it's your potential short when we hit the 200 day moving average so set those alarms uh, on your charts just highlight these areas and uh, let's uh, let's actually set this alarm right now so i'm adding that alarm there for injective and uh, that's not going to ping me when the price hits that area that's going to tell me uh, that it's time to start looking for a reaction here and start trying to figure out uh, what the price is going to do but we've got trend in the way we've got horizontal in the way we've got 200 day ma in the way so that could give you then your short opportunity for a potential move much lower down okay so that is how you build your trading plans especially in these type of uh these type of choppy conditions and after a dump like that and uh, you know you want to take profits quickly uh you want to be long you can be short obviously uh at the same time and uh you know you you, you sculpt you take your profits you raise your stops you look for smaller moves and uh, you know we stop looking for these massive 40 percent 50 percent plays until we know the bull market is back and uh, the action is back in time. Um, okay, let's see. I've been talking nonstop here and uh, I haven't spoken to my people uh, in the chats here. Uh, Paul says Naka, Naka Moto Games is bleeding. Yes, we've seen some extreme pain uh, in some of these gaming tokens. And I've got two examples for you. I've got Mavia and I've got IMX uh, for you guys. I've also got an interesting tweet uh, around this gaming situation. So we're gonna sh I'm going to show you guys that now um, and just uh, get some perspective there as to what's going on. Uh, there's lots of questions for E&A. &A, um, and uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I see make money, travel, enjoy. Says, I'd rather listen to Dylan than Ben. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, lots of ENAs. Lots of ENAs. Um, Choney, Chaney says, I'm capitulating on the altcoin dumps. We need positive action. And uh, AVAX is almost at 30 again. Says, it is what it is. But guys, remember, it is what it is. And uh, we can only just play uh, these levels. And I do... I do have AVAX for you. So uh, let's let's start with AVAX because now it's very topical. And uh, here we go. So that comment there from it is what it is. Uh, AVAX is nearly at 30. Well, I'll tell you what, that's going to close out that little double bottom that I just told you about now. So look out for something along these lines. Look at this area. We had that bounce. Now, nothing wrong with another visit to close out and a potential double bottom on the cards here uh, for AVAX. So for me, uh, I've told you guys, I did add to my position here on AVAX in this region. And if I was you or, uh, or, or a spot trader or things like that, we need to buy these altcoins on solid areas, okay? We can't say this is the bottom of the move it could be the bottom of the move but the next level could be the bottom as well so what you can do is if you're looking uh, for good buys on these altcoins you're buying on weakness but you're buying on weakness into massive areas so remember the sturdy level for avax is a massive buy zone we've had one two three four five weeks uh, of downside on avax 
this could be a nice little area for us around 30. This could be an opportunity here to grab some AVAX for your spot bags. And uh, if we do get lower down, and it might not be in a straight line, and it might actually not happen, uh, the cycle uh, for a while. But if we do go lower down, you're going to be buying AVAX at 20 uh, as well. And you're going to have the same thoughts and the same feeling you're having right now. While you're contemplating buying AVAX at 30, it's going to be the same feeling at 20, I can guarantee you. Because by the time we get to that 20, we're also going to have a situation like that where we've had that bounce and we're potentially coming uh, to visit it again. So just remember, uh, you just want to try and buy these things at great levels. And uh, especially if you're accumulating spot bags uh, and those things, then nothing wrong with buying solid areas. Remember, at some point, it always bounces. At some point, it goes back. It's not like we're trying to buy AVAX uh, at 95. It's not like we're trying to buy AVAX at 120. Uh, we are looking at AVAX here literally uh, at 30. And this looks like a nice little uh, horizontal retest in this zone. So uh, don't be fearful. If it loses that area, you could always add for the spot buyers. Uh, you could add at that 20 level. Again, that's just going to reduce your average entry price. And you're playing the long game anyway. If you are bullish on Bitcoin over the next five years, if you are bullish on Bitcoin over the next six months, you want to be securing these alts at solid levels. And it's not going to matter. Uh, you know, in uh, in six months time when Bitcoin or if Bitcoin is at 100K, 120K, buying AVAX at 30 is not going to bother you because Bitcoin at 100K, you're probably going to find AVAX at 70, at 80, uh, something along those lines. So just remember that. Just get the perspective right uh, as to where you are buying it. Then another banger, uh, uh, Phantom, and uh, Phantom's actually holding well. Now, remember, we got new Phantom. This is revised Phantom, okay? So this is old rusty car Phantom with a new engine, an Audi R8 engine in an old rusty old Bucky or whatever we call them in South Africa. What do we call them? A pickup truck uh, in the States. And, uh, you know, it's an old rusty one, but they got a nice juicy engine in it now. So uh, people are enjoying uh, the idea of Phantom again. And uh, we've seen the meme market on Phantom is also going to start picking up. So that could start also giving a little bit of energy uh, to the phantom ecosystem and you can see uh, in uh, relative to avax you can see phantom is actually holding uh, a little bit better so for me uh, i'm loving phantom anything down to this 56 still looks like a nice little zone and uh, you know that might be the higher low of this potential move and it's a very sharp I mean, it's a very sharp move down, okay? So I wouldn't be surprised if we get sideways and they send us up and do something along these lines over the next couple of weeks. That could easily happen uh, as well. So we can't discount that. Jeez, that's a horrible line. Let me try, let me try to do this one a little bit better. Uh, you could be <laughs> seeing something uh, along these lines. Jeez, I, I'm getting messier and messier with some of these lines here uh, at the moment. Okay, uh, so Phantom still looking fine for me. Uh, nothing to worry about. We're not losing the lows yet. Uh, we've got a 618. We've got weekly supports. Uh, for me, this is a massive area. I bought Phantom on that dip uh, into the 59 region. If it dips there again, I'm probably going to have another go. I'm probably going to add some more uh, on that Phantom position. And, uh, you know, it's a good zone. We can't ignore good areas. And uh, if we dip lower, that's fine. Okay. If we dip lower, we're looking at the 200 day MA uh, at around about 46, but also a nice juicy zone uh, to be looking at uh, some of these altcoins. Okay, chat, 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 chat. Let's see. I'm just reading. I'm just reading. Uh, reading the chat. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Luba says hello, Bruce. Okay, so well, there he is. Bruce is there. Bruce is there. He's waving. He's waving. Uh, Jay says the bears are ripping. Um, let's see. Uh, t t uh, Mr. Jane says I'm farming gummy, but can't see where to put my soul wallet. Uh, so it's got to be yeah. As long as it's a it's a uh, it's a, like a phantom wallet or one of those soul wallets, uh, you should be fine. Don't use a Dex. Uh, for your wallet address and uh yeah, yeah the details should be there in the show description if not we're going to get them added for you and uh you know run goes on at length about farming the gummies as well so make sure you're watching uh, run show remember this is all happening now uh in the next uh, in the next 24 hours the airdrop is happening so make sure you've done your work there make sure you are farming your gummies um, because that airdrop is the snapshot is happening and uh, then uh, after that there are no more chances um, okay, let's go. Let's go. I see Psyker's looking for Ton. That's been a big performer. Uh, there's G Swift questions here. Uh, sex, sex, sex. I can't read the Sexago, Sexago Thea. Conspicua. So it's probability of bouncing at 59. Yeah, we like that area. It's not the worst. Um, you know, they could front run that. Uh, they could front run that thing, uh, that 58 level a little bit. 
Okay, let's see what else I've got for you. We've covered AVAX. Um, then I wanted to cover some memes for you. Also, just out of interest, uh, so much weakness here on the weekly uh, for Doge. And, uh, you know, it's a typical it's a typical ult now at the moment. Looks like ETH, looks like Solana, looks like Phantom, looks like AVAX. They all got the same look to them. So moving down into the same big area, 618 coming up for us uh, at 13.3. I wouldn't panic at all here on Doge uh, until we start closing under these levels. Then we potentially looking deeper. But for me, Doge, all systems go yeah, down to about 0 0.133. We could easily see this little double bottom play here on Doge, then get some kind of relief bounce. And, uh, you know, then we reassess. When we get to resistance, we can take profits, we can reassess the situation, and then look at BTC and understand where we are uh, in the market by the time we get a pump and we can plan uh, accordingly. So Doge, nothing wrong here with Doge. Uh, still holding these levels nicely. 0 0.133. Watch that area. Uh, watch that area closely then whiff looking under a bit of pressure again and uh, you know i like to say whiff is a nice recovery uh, recovery trade if you get a dump in the market um it's actually quite fun uh, the minute you get a big dump you jump into whiff that gives you a nice little move uh, generally we've noticed lately you get a nice pump uh, out of whiff so take a look at that and uh, we know some of the guys are long whiff uh, myself included there's this ansom fight coming up and uh, it's just a, it's a bit of a laugh long but uh, you might see the guys uh, start pumping this dog whiff hat uh, based on ansom's uh, fight coming up and uh, that uh, i think that's tomorrow so keep your eyes on whiff there could be a little bit of a pump here uh, brewing for us but as far as the bigger picture goes uh, on whiff i wouldn't be too concerned uh, until we start losing this two level so if we get weakness in the market look how they're buying this up here uh, at this two region this is a 618 as well so if we get that kind of play uh, out of whiff look out for that little double bottom move nothing wrong with that and uh, you know we could get that bounce again we've got to be prepared for lower levels i had a conversation in my office with fred not too long ago uh, probably three, four weeks ago. And uh, he was like, yeah, you know, I, I want to be buying with at $1 again. And I had a look at this chart and, uh, you know, it could happen. Okay, so here's $1 uh, for WIF at the 786 FIB. So this could play out as well. If we get sideways and a bleed out uh, through May, through June, uh, we could see WIF back at one dollar and again golden opportunity uh for something like whiff if we do hit that one dollar level we could have an absolute banger that could be a banger buy zone uh for us uh, if we do get uh, get to those levels scary thought though at uh, you know at uh, when we're looking at it now because that means we need to deal with a little bit of pain first uh before we can get back uh to the fun okay i've got to start speeding up here i'm running out of time um okay uh render here's a good one render so render's also bleeding out but is it holding the lows yes so far so good on render uh you don't have to panic yet look at this wick here uh, on render on the 618 there's a couple of things in the way for render so i wouldn't stress just yet uh, if you are watching your tokens uh you've got a big level here 6.9 okay you've got horizontals here i would say look for a bounce in that area there 6.9 if we got more weakness you can see we've got horizontals tying in here for you uh they're going to try and hold render up uh, in that region so look out 6.9 to 7 look for a bounce in that area if we do get more weakness this is it it's the 618 it's the banger we got the 200 day moving average pushing up here there's a lot happening uh in this area that could tell us uh render at about six is going to be a nice little zone uh to have another little crack so uh big areas for me watch seven and watch six both of them nice high impact zones and uh, nice big uh, big uh, big bounce zones for us uh bruce says is blowfin available for trade in the u.s bruce is blowfin available for trade in the u.s it is i'm using it matter of fact i just same thing thank you for calling your bitcoin long because i closed my scalp short when you told me you were doing that can't, can't oh, we'll see. that might have been the biggest mistake we'll see <laughs> it was profitable i'm perfectly happy with it let's take thank a look you really you see it's hanging around look it's not exciting yeah. at the moment you know it's flat um okay but we'll we'll see we'll keep watching okay so blowfin is working in the states thank you Bruce. um yeah so you can check it out you might need a, a vpn uh to get it working but it is working okay uh, another ai token for you this is uh Bittensa. tower great performer as well and you can see what's going on here i've pulled out my 200 day ma for you guys because we know this gives us a nice reaction this has been support for uh for tower basically since october 23 like you've seen with a lot of these altcoins and uh, here we go it's pushing up higher so i would expect some kind of reaction uh, in this region so look out 
for Tao. Anything down to 400. If we get this push into the zone, you've got to go for it. You've got to, you've got to look at this and say, that's a bounce zone. we got the 200-day slowly creeping up. we got the 618. Uh, as well and we got a trend and we got horizontals uh, in that area so for me tower anything down to 400 it's a no panic zone you can't be stressed out if you're dripping into 400 it makes sense you get the double bottom you're pushing into a trend as well so there's a couple of reasons why uh, that could be a nice little zone there it could be a nice little zo long zone it could be a nice little bounce zone uh, for you there so no stress there uh, until we start losing the trend remember the rule if we start losing the trend then things start looking a little bit sadder and uh, this downtrend then continues and continues and uh, then we start looking uh, for lower areas but uh, you know i'm not even going to say it 200 Ooh, 200 is deep and dark uh, you know not a good look if you're buying a tower at 750 but uh, yeah let's let's see let's see let's see um <laughs> no you are absolutely not going to get gummy rugged it's a token for the community no one's holding anything they're giving you uh these tokens you're going to be uh, very impressed uh with what is happening here with gummy it's a token for the fans it's a token for the community and uh yeah you will definitely not be getting right um okay uh let's see what frag master says om mantra chart i do have a i've got three more charts for you guys let me just bang through these quickly uh ondo another big one for us uh rwa narrative blackrock you know the deal and uh, again we've broken our nice little area they try to hold it okay so they try to retest uh, this 85 region and uh, they've actually failed they they lost the zone so now what are we watching we've got to look at our next area where's our next reaction zone and uh, right now from, for me ondo uh, it's a 618 it's horizontals i've got a 50 day moving average pushing up here so for me ondo support that you want to be watching 0 0.73 so if you get a little push uh, into that zone that is nice and juicy 50 day moving average 618 for uh, horizontals here for you guys so uh, i love this area here for ondo 0 0.73 to 0 0.74 that's a hot zone and then lower down we've got a bigger 618 pool mark this one this is where you need the alarm 0 0.65 Okay, I'm going to set an alarm here on TradingView. You go to the plus sign on the right-hand side, add alarm, 0 0.65. Okay, if you get that opportunity there, for me, Ondo, that is a nice juicy bounce zone. That is where you're looking for a nice juicy long there on Ondo. Uh, there could be a move coming there in that zone. So that is my preferred zone. Obviously, look for the reaction a little bit higher. Look for the reaction here uh, at the 73 to 74. But I do like this guy. Uh, that's uh, option number one for me, that a little bit a little bit lower down. Uh, Luba says Ondo is another strong project. Yeah, I mean, BlackRock is all over. Uh, these ondo guys so uh, we know we know there's legs there and again opportunities to buy ondo bigger picture remember bigger picture ondo could be trading at two dollars three dollars uh, those levels so uh, bigger picture if you're buying at 65 or you're buying at 70 it doesn't really matter uh, if you're buying spot and you understand the bigger picture uh, on ondo and what is actually behind it and uh, what is happening there uh okay one more for you link i know we got the link fans in there and uh, these are my zones for link so i bought link on that dump uh, at about 11.9 i didn't catch the bottom uh the bottom was about what was the bottom 11.8 so i must have got it a little bit higher maybe 12 uh, somewhere in that area i was pushing buttons i was frantically pushing buttons and uh, he, so here's link again coming for another drift down lower anything around about 12 for me looks like an area where we should get some kind of bounce some kind of reaction here uh, for link again once we get the bounce we reassess okay we'll we'll take a look we'll take a, a look we'll take a step back we'll look at the picture we'll say okay this thing is pumped What's the market doing? Where's BTC? Where's the resistance? Are we taking profits? Are we bailing? Uh, we'll figure that one out. But uh, if you get a move down for link into 12, 11.8, 12, anywhere in that area for me, it's still a safe zone. It's still a nice reaction zone. And uh, then if we start losing that area, I would say it's going to be a journey. It could take a couple of weeks, but our next banger zone, okay? Never forget this area. Mark this one on your chart. Look at the support here look at the size of this thing uh at 8.5 i think that could be the trade it could be the trade of the decade uh at about 8.5 there uh for link so look out for that uh, look out for that level uh lower down that could coincide with a bleed out into may june and then that final bottom move and then we can send that thing so massive zone for me here for link 8.6 8.7 and uh 11.8 to 12 but the real question is Here's the real question you've got to ask yourself. 
you're looking at link now saying i will definitely buy that at 8.9 when it happens okay remember this conversation when you get link at 8.9 and you get the opportunity to push the button are you going to push the button that is the question uh you got to ask yourself now remember this chart look how juicy uh this chart looks that looks like uh such a hot uh, little reaction zone for me okay i've got one more thing for you guys uh you know all about this uh, you know all about this took a uh, situation so let me just share the screen for you and uh took is turning into a like it's it started out as a meme token like an absolute joke on uh joke meme token and now they've turned it into a, its own channel okay it's got he's got his own channel now uh, on youtube and uh, here's Tuka. So uh, this is the type of content they are producing. This is now yesterday's uh, news report. But uh, take a look at uh, take a look at Tuka. Holy fucking shit, folks! Reports are coming in that the Token 2049 crypto conference in Dubai has been transformed into the Book of Genesis. And that's because in an unprecedented turn of events, an almighty flood is sweeping through the streets of Dubai, a city that has never experienced a drop of rain in over a thousand years. It turns out the crypto bros have all descended on Dubai only to end up exactly like their portfolios, underwater. Just check out this incredible footage of crypto influencers running for cover as they get quite literally liquidated. Hello, boss. Salam alaikum. Me today no come job. Job no coming today. Me water too much road road. Oh my God! Is that Gary Gensler doing a rain dance? You get the picture. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, lots happening there with Tuka and uh, you guys. Well, the ticker is Tuka, as you know. Let's just take a look at that chart. Let's uh, let's actually add that chart there for you quickly, and uh, hopefully you guys got the buy zone. I gave you guys the buy zone uh, two days ago when I did my show, and uh, I just want to show you how beautiful uh, this thing was. Let's uh, let's just find this video. Here it is. Um, okay. Uh, so here's Tuka uh, charting it on bird eye at the moment. Look at this buy zone that they were gifted. Okay, gifted this buy zone here uh, for took a 0.039. After that, it pinged that zone. 130% bounce uh, on Tuka. So this is coming, becoming very tradable. It's becoming very charty. And, uh, you know, it's responding uh, to good areas. Remember, there's big things planned there for Tuka. Just follow Uncle Run. He's telling you his plans uh, behind it. They got their own channel. Follow them there uh, on YouTube. Tuka Coulson. Okay, follow the follow the channel there and uh, stay up to date uh, with all the alpha and uh, and things happening there for Tuka. Okay, guys, uh, yes, I'm out of here. I'm going to a function. I'm going to an event now uh, with some of the guys, and uh, we're going to be at the conference. If you're in Dubai, just DM me. Come see me at uh, Token Forty Nine. Uh, we'll see you at the conference. I'm walking around Dubai. I'm sure you can't miss me. I'm wearing a couple of these hats, and uh, I got the beard out in full force. So, uh, yes, guys, uh, have a good evening or have a good day. I'm out of here. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>